What's going on, guys? Billy Pinkney here alongside top pitcher in the L.A. Dodgers organization, Ryan Pepio. Ryan, how's it going, man? I'm doing well, Billy. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been about a year since we last did our last interview uh, during the offseason of 2020. What a 21 season you had this past year in AA and then AAA. But before we get into that, you just came back from Dubai. Tell us about it. Yeah, I got married about almost a month ago now. Um, then had an amazing wedding in Mexico, and then honeymoon in Dubai. That's awesome. Congratulations. And, uh, yeah, let's get right into it by talking about this past season. What a year for you. I remember the last time we spoke, you were, I believe, in it was single A. I think you made it up to maybe high A, was it? And then you had that big break with COVID, and then you were invited to that little summer camp that the Dodgers had at Dodger Stadium. So you got a little taste of what it was like to kind of be in the big leagues, but then you really had a beautiful season in double A. Take us through the season that you had and, and kind of the start from spring training. I got got to experience big league camp this year, this past year. So that was an amazing experience getting able to work with those guys day in, day out, see how Kershaw, Bueller, Justin Turner, Mookie Betts, how all those guys go about their business and just like sit back, watch, and just kind of take mental notes of like what they do and how they go about their business. But it was that was just a great experience to get to be able to do that. After going through basically no season, it felt really long. Yeah, you had a nice time in double A, ERA below three, racking up strikeouts like you wouldn't believe. 81 strikeouts in double uh, A there. And what were some of your keys to being successful this past season? What went right for you? Um, just attacking the strike zone, being able to be more in the zone than I had I was in 2019 and in 2020, just kind of build it off what I had done um, at the alternate site in summer camp. Um, and then just, you know, just going out there and being able to pitch in games again. So, you know, for people, honestly, the whole season, there was just like a little bit of added extra bonus to every single got time going out there because you had the year before where you didn't play any games. So, being able to go out there every five, six days um, and getting to play against outside competition, somebody else other than your own organization, um, that was uh, amazing. Yeah, for sure. I remember texting you right around the trade deadline because it was uh, quite the trade deadline. Your name was coming up in a lot of talks, but then they ended up trading uh, Josiah Gray over to the Nationals and ended up keeping you. I know that you were, you were a hot topic. What was your mentality like and your thought process through that whole trade deadline a couple weeks there? That was my first like trade deadline where I was uh, – like playing in the season. So it was definitely different than the one before uh, 2020 at the alternate site. Cause there it was just like, we we're just in the USC locker room, just watching it and seeing, waiting the countdown and everything. Yeah. But this year it was like, all right, you have a job to do. So you still have to go out there and perform. And then like the week, week or two before there was about more scouts than at any game. Like usually there's some scouts there watching just the nature of it, but that those couple weeks going up into the deadline, there were a bunch more. And then obviously the trade talks and all the rumors and everything going around. I just try not to look too much into it because if I get wrapped up into that, then I lose focus on my job, which is to go out there and pitch. And I was to the point where um, whatever happened, happened, whatever was meant to be is meant to be. So if I got traded, I got traded. If I didn't, it was a blessing either way. So I'm blessed to be where I am. Um, I'm very happy to be with the Dodgers um, and keeping this thing going. Did you think that you were going to get traded? No. I, well, I, I'm just going to say no because I, haven't, I just didn't really look into it. I, yeah. No, yeah. I didn't know. I didn't care. It just was like whatever happens, happens. Right. And then they ended up promoting you to AAA. Was it right after that deadline? Yeah, it was like two days later. It was like right when the deadline happened. Later. Okay. Wow. Wow. So what was that transition like? Uh, it was – it was really cool because, like, when I got called up to Low A in Great Lakes in 2019, like, I just got a phone call because I was in Arizona. I got a phone call on an off day, and they were like, hey, do you want to go up to Great Lakes? And I was like, absolutely. And they're like, all right, your plane, your plane is later. Um, but after that one, it was after a game, pitching coach taps me on the shoulder and says, hey, come into Henny's office, our manager. And I go walk in there. He's just got his hand out for a handshake, and he goes, Pep, sad to see you go, but congrats, you're going to AAA. And I was like – ecstatic we just lost so it was like i was like oh gosh like do i go back in the locker room excited or do i kind of like keep it a little low key but i mean everyone kind of knew 
like when I walked away, came out of the office, then everybody got excited for me. So it's kind of like, ah, the game was, didn't really matter that much, but um, it was really cool. Um, and then getting to go drive an hour to uh, hour and a half to Oklahoma city and then hop on a plane with Andre Jackson um, and meet the team over in round rock and Austin outside of Austin, Texas. So um, that was a great experience, a great group of guys in double A that I had an amazing time with, and then a great group of guys in triple A as well. That's awesome. Yeah. Did, did you notice the difference in the hitters when you got to triple A, were they more veteran experienced guys or was there a big jump? Would you say in competition or was it just a small marginal difference? The jump in competition, I wouldn't say was drastically a change. I think the biggest thing was like you mentioned experience. Um, I went from double A being like middle of the pack age wise at 23. And then I went to triple A where I was like one of the youngest guys on the team yeah. by like 10 years to some people, um, which that was totally different. Um, and then you go out there and you pitch against guys who are 40 man guys that are going up and down. Um, and then guys who are um, on in triple A, who've got five to 10 years of big league experience. So they've seen thousands and thousands of pitches. So the, difference between the ball that's that far off the plate and a ball that's on the plate. Like they know exactly the difference when it comes out of your hand. So um, I think the biggest thing with the, with hitters was like play discipline and then that, like their approach. Were there any veterans on the team that you were able to pick their brains and, and learn a lot from? Yeah, I was really close with Austin Bibbins Derricks. Um, okay. He's been, he pitched with the Rangers, um, been all around um, the league. He's pitching with, uh, Lee say right now in the Dominican Winter League, so I still keep in talk, contact with him. Aaron Wilkerson, who just signed pitching in Japan a couple of days ago, um, and then everybody. I mean, everybody else just kind of just took me under their wing and just helped me out, and um, it was just a, a great, great clubhouse environment to be in. Now, as we head into this off season, what facets of your game are you, have you been working on, or would you like to work on come January? Starting throwing again. A um, few, well, having, didn't really take that much time off, but starting to pick up throwing again, um, touching the mound, everyone uh, here and there, um, just focusing on strike, striking everything, um, mixing up some pitch grips, um, adding a couple pitches, um, just kind of refining everything, just building off what I did really well this past season and then making some minor tweaks to fix some things that, um, that I didn't do as well. Yeah, speaking of pitch grips, would you be able to show us a few of your pitch grips and what you've been working on? Yeah, so um, let's see. Obviously, got the change up that I've been going with, um, circle change, um, kind of like off the – I got some messed up fingers, so a little crooked, but it kind of works. I like hook like over here, and like I hook the four seam. So I throw a four seam fastball and then just rotate it with the change up so I can go right off of it so I kind of have the same spin. So as it comes out of my hand, it looks the same. And then um, I'm going with the slider that's just like Blake Trinan, so like the banana split, they call it. So over the seam here and then kind of just uh, put the finger right on the inside here and then rip the side of it and get kind of like the gyro spin slider. Um, bringing back a curveball, it's pretty much similar to this little spike here as well. And then um, working on a cutter as well, so just an offset of fastball, throwing a cutter. So – going with a little five pitch mix, just trying to work on some things, add more tools to the toolbox to, you know, get as many people out as you can. Your changeup is very similar. You have a very similar arm speed and arm action as your fastball. Was that difficult to really perfect? Because that's a really nasty weapon. If you're able to get that down pat where the hitters aren't really sure what they're getting. Yeah, it was, it took a lot of work. I didn't really have one um, through college, uh, the beginning going into college. Um, and then even my freshman year, I just didn't really have one, but it was just kind of something I just worked um, tirelessly in catch play, just working on different grips, found the one I liked, and then just kind of just fine tuned it to um, what it is today. And just like you said, throw it with the same arm speed, same deception, just so that it comes out looking exactly like a fastball and then hitter swings thinking they're getting a heater and then the ball's not there. And then, I get a strike or a ground out or weak contact or something. Did you work on tunneling at all with the, those very uh, small cameras? Yeah, definitely some tunneling with uh, all the slow motion cameras, seeing yeah. how it comes out. Um, I think the biggest thing was um, the arm speed deception okay. and um, making sure that I was releasing at the same same point, which 
um, I am able to do that. And so that in, a, in itself has helped with the tunneling. And then, like I said, with like the grip, since I'm throwing it off of the four seam, how I throw my heater, like it comes out kind of similar uh, rotation, like spin. So that it looks kind of like a fastball for the most part, all the way to the plate until it's too late to say, oh, no, it's not a not a fastball. Right. 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 Would, to younger players, would you recommend throwing that changeup as their second pitch or learn it later on? How do you feel? What point? Learn a changeup as young as you can. Um, uh, motion is a fastball. You're not like trying to manipulate the ball or throw a, um, like a slider or curveball that could possibly hurt your arm at a young age if you're not throwing it correctly. So I think um, a changeup is the biggest pitch to throw at a younger age because you don't want to like teach somebody a curveball or slider too young. Um, cause then that's how a kid will get hurt or they'll have arm injuries later on. But a changeup is something you can just, it's basically just picking a grip that works for you and throwing it as much as you can and just make it work. Um, however you throw, like if somebody throws a two seam sinker, then you're going to want to throw a pitch off of that. And the biggest thing for me was just messing around with the grip, see what I like and what fit my hand. Um, and obviously Anyone who has social media, go on Pitching Ninja's Twitter and look at all the drops that he has of everybody's pitch grips and then see which one. Mess around with everything. Like That's the fun part about baseball is like you can pick up a baseball and do so many different things with it and just have fun with it. Yeah, I was speaking to another player in the A's organization. He was talking about when he does pitching lessons with younger players, he always pushes that change up at a young age because it also takes a longer time to develop. I mean, it's 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 not easy to really craft and perfect, and it's something that takes some time. So definitely, I wish I started throwing it yet when I was younger. Yeah, it's definitely a field pitch. Like yeah. It does take plenty of time, and it takes a long time to prefer, perfect it. Um, obviously, I'm still trying to perfect mine. And... I've been throwing it for five years now or four. I don't even know how long, a while now it feels like, but it is a field pitch. So the younger you start trying to throw it, the better off you're going to be and be able to perfect it at a younger age. Right. For any younger players out there who are struggling with commands, commanding their fastball or other pitches, what would you recommend to them? Be in the zone with the fastball first. Don't worry about everything else. Like everyone's like, Oh, I just got to strike my curveball at a younger age fastball first because you pitch off of your fastball so you want to just dial in that fastball and if you're missing to your arm side move your catcher to your glove side so that you hammer that glove side and then when you miss it's still over the plate and I think the biggest thing that I learned from uh, college to pro ball about command is like where you set up your catcher and your target because the big thing is like targeting and I think the biggest thing in college, we were like, are right, you trying to like paint the fine corners? Well, no, you're not trying to do that because a hitter is going to get themselves out seven out of 10 times for the most part. Yeah. So take your odds with that and just split the plate in halves. And so then if your catcher is split in the glove side half of the plate and you miss a little bit, you're still over the middle of the plate or you still have a little bit to the out, outside corner where they're, if you're going for the black of the plate, Sometimes you're going to get the umpire that gives it to you, and then sometimes you're not. But if you miss a little bit one way, it's automatically a ball. And if you miss the other way, it could be a ball because he's got to reach so far and it doesn't look like a strike. So I think the biggest thing is um, targeting probably. Yeah. I mean, just just foc like the focal point. Right. I was at this talk years ago with Myron Rivera, and he was talking about, for younger players, the kids were asking about, oh, when should I start throwing a curveball and this and that. He was saying just work on the fastball when you're younger, on hitting your spots, hitting the corners, and then you could work in those other pitches later on because that, that seems to be a trend nowadays. Everybody wants to throw every single pitch and, and have all this command over it, and it's tough. It's not easy to do, especially when you're 12 years old. So definitely I would say, yeah, focus on the fastball and and then later on uh mixing those other ones but uh yeah i do want to wrap up with some random questions that i have for you about this past season bring it on let's get it started uh the best story best memory story situation from this past season that you remember i'll give you two okay um walk off grand slam in double a in tulsa this year um that was insane we had I, we probably had like three or four walk-offs this season, 
which I hadn't had uh, like home run one. Okay. And never, experienced, wow. never had experienced one of those. And we had like three or four of them, but a walk off grand slam in the bottom of the ninth, when we were down two or three and a grand slam takes it out with two outs two that was insane. Um, and then, uh, the other one was, uh, the end of the season, Las Vegas trip with the AAA team, just hanging by the pool with the guys. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, so many. Everyone knows about the memories on the field. They see it in front of them on the TV or at the ballpark, but you can't really make up the ones that you have with the guys out in the, at the hotel, the bus rides, or out in the outside of the stadium. So uh, definitely, that's definitely some good stuff there. Next one: Were there any pranks that you witnessed or were a part of in the clubhouse this year? Uh, yeah, when um, Stephen Souza got came back down from LA. Um, one of the guys decided to mess with him and put all of his stuff from his locker and put it in the clubby's office. So when he came back, his locker was empty. <laughs> <laughs> Want to get him out of there, huh? But I'll give you another one too, because the first week I was there in AAA, uh, we were going from Round Rock to Albuquerque for the second part of the two week road trip. And they said, all right, we're going to do romper road trip, like in the airport. And I was talking to my wife and I was like, Hey, we're the guys are saying we're doing rompers like through the airport and wearing them. She goes, they're probably messing with you and pranking you so that you're the first, it's your first week there. You're going to show up to the airport in a romper and be the only one there. And they're just going to laugh at you. And I was like, I don't know. I mean, I saw some of the guys like looking at them on Amazon. I mean, that'd be a pretty elaborate plan, but they didn't. And we all were wearing rompers and it was hilarious. Oh my God. So. We got a picture of that somewhere. Oh yeah, it's on. It's on my Instagram somewhere. Is it Instagram? I'll, I'll send. I'll send you on. Okay, it's on your Instagram. Okay, all right. I got. We got to get that in here. That's awesome. Did you have a weird fan interaction this past season? Not really with me. Okay. Um, but with the bullpen, I know uh, there was one time that um, a girl decided to, or a girl who was a coach of a softball team. Their girls took a dollar bill and wrote the coach's number on it and dropped it in the bullpen and said, <laughs> somebody call our coach or something like that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, you have some of these bullpens that are right next to the stands. The first row is right behind the, their backs. It's, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. There are some interesting spots where the bullpens are, and some of them are on the field, some of them are there. But a lot of them, especially in minor leagues, it's like they're right next to where the fans yeah. walk next to you and everything, and they're right up on you. And, Sometimes you get some good hecklers out there, too. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. What was the best and then the worst city or stadium that you played in this past season? The best stadium. Oh, that's tough. Tulsa was really, really tough to beat. Great crowd. Um, really nice ballpark. Good city. Um, so I'm going to go with Tulsa for the best. We played in some really good ones, so that's a tough one. And then the worst... Um, Albuquerque, not mm. a fan of that place. I was a fan when I was taking BP, and I was a fan when I got my hit. But other than that, not not a huge fan of that place. Right. Oh yeah. So you guys hit in that league, right? Because it's a national. How'd that go hitting this year? One for four. Okay. All right. Not bad. Not bad. I'll take it. I will say the first guy I faced was throwing like ninety five, and in the first pitch I saw, my manager said, "Hey, take the first pitch," and I'm like loading up and i stepped right when the ball hit the glove and i was like yeah that looked like 105. yeah yeah they have you bunt at all no thank gosh oh, yeah. <laughs> i would bunt it a few times in like batting practice but oh man i would have been scared yeah. scared scared and every time i got up there there was like nobody on base or somebody like on third and they were or like two outs or something like that and they weren't gonna make me bunt and i was like yes thank you yeah oh my god the last one i'll ask you here the toughest hitter that you had to face this past season? I don't know. There's a lot of tough ones. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. We had some some good rehab guys. Too. Yeah, I was about to say rehab hitters. Yeah, rehab hitter. Um, oh, Alex Bregman. I faced oh, Bregman. Yeah. yeah, it didn't go well for me. <laughs> well, Ryan, I appreciate you hopping on for a little bit and uh, enjoy the rest of the off season. We got a while to go. We'll see what happens with the CBA and all that. So, uh, best of luck. And then, and then uh, we'll see you guys later. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Billy. Hey, guys, it's Tom McCarthy, the voice of the Philadelphia Phillies. You're listening to Billy the Bat Boys Corner.